Good evening and welcome to Breaking Views on NDTV. I am Ankit Tyagi. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same story. It almost seems like a stuck tape repeating all along almost every single day and almost in every single parliamentary session. Day 2 of the second half of the budget session of the parliament once again witnessed ruckus. Once again it was adjourned first till 2 p.m. and then later for the day. No work. On one side there was demand of an apology and on the other side demand of a JPC and between both these demands the work of the parliament completely being hampered. What's interesting is that the government this time was the treasury benches were up in arms and without an apology from Rahul Gandhi they don't want the parliament to function. At the end of every parliament session we get a record of how quickly so many ordinances and bills have been passed take for example the farmers bill which was largely not debated due to the ruckus when it was passed and largely not debated when it was removed back the parliament's function in a parliamentary democracy is very important this is where bills laws impacting you and i our lives are discussed debated deliberated before they are passed is the parliament doing its job is the big question so today we thought instead of getting a panel and once again what we see one side against other uh, in the parliament we'll try and drive it towards a solution is there a way to end the logjam and in that what we will do we will be joined by a few guests we will be joined by all these guests one by one to give us a sense of a diverse uh, viewpoint from the opposition we will be joined by Derek O'Brien the member of parliament we'll also go across to union minister SP Singh Baghel and we'll try and talk to them congress would be represented by Supriya Srinath of the congress party and what we'll try and do instead of a debate today the show is called breaking views we'll try and get their views on board to see whether there is there any regret as far as the parliamentarians are concerned with the way the parliament is function and is there a way out don't we as you know the voters in this democracy as people of india don't we as participants of a parliamentary democracy don't we deserve a fully functioning parliament all the political fights the shadow boxing the you know political brownie point scoring that can be done on election trails and there will be enough opportunities for every political party should the political parties the government the treasury benches the opposition should they not come together and at least try give a sense that the parliament in its true form of parliamentary democracy is functioning let us try and get views diverse views on what could be the way out and what is the criticism either way uh, we'll be joined by mr as i told you derek o'brien and we'll also go across in fact to mr sps bagel but before we do that let's uh, first start with you uh, mr derek o'brien uh, he is in fact uh, the leader of the uh, rajya sabha the legislative party of rajya sabha uh, of the tmc uh, so thank you so much for joining us member of parliament first of all Uh, may I congratulate you? I've been told that you won the best parliamentarian award, sir. This is very special. No, no, this is only one. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, now let's let's begin. Let, Celebrations let's, can wait. Let's discuss a more serious issue. Okay, What's let's. What's the situation in parliament today? Let's let's start with let's start with the serious uh, uh, you know discussion, sir, and question on that. you win this uh, award sir of the best parliamentarian at a time when seriously we have not seen only in this session but other sessions a complete washout the parliament is hardly functioning the way it it's supposed to the way it should how does what does this uh, mean you know winning an award at this point of time and is there a way to end the logjam well this is a unique parliament what we've been seeing for the last two days you see the bjp is a political party but they are run by two gentlemen mr modi and mr amit shah so the instructions are clear let's turn parliament they say into a deep dark chamber there are 14 more days to parliament parliament to go 
if their strategy is how do you make parliament irrelevant listen to this for the first time the government themselves are disrupting parliament now this is a very dangerous situation in the past we've had situations and i've got i've got out the statistics where in the last 8 years only 13% of bills are sent for parliamentary scrutiny just 13% about 1 out of 10 that number earlier was over 60% of parliamentary bills were sent for scrutiny that's not happening the young people of india in schools and colleges must know that bills in parliament are passed the average time of passing a bill today is 10 minutes hmm. you can make a couple of cups of maggi noodles also quickly as that but it's a very very serious situation parliament is meant to debate to deliberate i can make a little prediction sad as it may sound we've got 14 about 20 working days to go and the way the bjp want this they don't want to discuss basic issues what are we talking about jobs unemployment as opposition mps okay. lic state bank of india linked to the uh, linked to the uh, issues of the adani company we want to discuss that then you right. come to other subjects you come to other subjects like center state relations the bjp do not want to discuss any of these issues so they've come up with a tactic we have to counter the tactic there's no use only talking about it on television channels is how do we get parliament to run okay. when the government themselves are dis- are disturbing and disrupting parliament you know uh, it seems sir and this is what a lot of commentators are saying that the uh, uh the seeds of what we are seeing in the parliament for already shown or at least the signs were there when prime minister narendra modi just a day before the parliament uh, session uh, he was speaking in karnataka and without naming rahul gandhi he launched a blistering attack on what he said on foreign soil now do you see that being followed up in the parliament and is there somewhere a feeling that this is a diversionary tactic because the government knew that the opposition is going to come hard at them uh, whether it is the cbi ed issue or uh, in fact the demand of a jpc 100% the trinamool congress and we are not the only party so let's not take the credit it's a team effort the trinamool congress have given seven notices we had a parliamentary party meeting our chairperson mamta banerji was uh, on the call uh, national general secretary abhishek banerji was on the call not all our mps 5 6 mps senior mps were on the call and this was our strategy saying 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 we'll raise these issues other parties had different issues but the common the common ground is the opposition must have their say the government will have its way because the government has the numbers so here's how it works Mr. Tiyagi, here's how it works. We are suggesting BJP, please stop disrupting Parliament. You seven days, eight days, which are left for passing your legislation, and on the other seven, eight days, let's discuss some serious issues, which are there to discuss. Now, since you mentioned Mr. Modi, I would like to put out. Please look at the track record of Mr. Modi when he has been on foreign soil. try and get the video tapes of what he said on foreign soil it's not about foreign soil or what you say here this is about parliament there's a format there's a structure opposition have given notices and today we actually saw the minister of bjp saying utho 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 what's the strategy till 5th of april right opposition will only come on television channels because we will not be allowed to speak in parliament who is disrupting parliament bjp who is responsible for running parliament the government with the opposition hmm. interesting uh, but uh, mr ryan if i can uh, you know ask you uh, you were talking about uh, the government's diversionary tactics but this is on some statements which were made by mr rahul gandhi allegedly against the country on foreign soil what's your view on what mr rahul gandhi said i am not going to get drawn into a conversation which the bjp want they want to discuss what an mp from palakkad said in london i want to discuss from the trinamool congress point of view one why are you doing economic blockade of states of non bjp states number two what's your view we want to discuss lic and uh, state bank of india and the money at risk there three three we want to discuss the price of lpg and the other essential uh, prices 
So what did we do? We'll have a we'll have protests outside parliament. Four, we want to discuss the borders where border security force is impinging on states. Five, we want to discuss job opportunities, the unemployment situation. These are what we want to discuss. But the BJP, this is a very dangerous road. You know, uh, Mr. Tiagi, this is a very dangerous road. Think about this. I just want to give you one little simple uh, class 8 civics theory. Parliament, Parliament is responsible to who? Parliament is responsible to the people. Hmm. The government is responsible to who? Parliament. So we've got the government, we've got parliament, and we've got the people. So every time now BJP and Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah specifically, the other ministers and all, no, no say in this. Whenever parliament is disrupted, what happens? Then the government is not responsible to the people. That's why BJP want to use this tactic to discuss, okay. to disrupt parliament. But I can tell you, Opposition parties are on the same page. We are not going to get drawn into a narrative which the BJP want. Sir, but you're talking we will about not inside the house and outside the house. So you're talking about opposition unity, but uh, and you said that all of them are on the same page. But it's ironic that the Trinamool Congress couldn't find the time, sir, uh, to go to the meeting which was called by Mr. Kharge. All opposition parties were there, but you seem to be maintaining a one arm, one arm distance as far as the Congress is concerned. You please don't worry about the fissures between there are no fissures. There are no fissures in the opposition. The bigger fissure has to be fixed in parliament. Where in a when I last checked the constitution, when I last checked the constitution, this is a parliamentary democracy. Now we are getting into a stage we still haven't become a pres a, a presidential form of government where there is one Mr. Modi and one Mr. Shah. They go two days before parliament, give the story. And then all of them follow, follow, follow. Please understand, just having a new parliamentary building, just having a new parliamentary building with all the facilities, I look forward to, to, to that. But this is a very, very serious issue when you're discussing bills and passing them in 10 minutes. When you're, I, and I'll say this again, you're muting the voice of opposition MPs, the farm bills, we did not get a chance to ask for a vote, a division. These are real things happening in parliament. Sansar TV is being censored. Young India, awake. Media owners, awake. Thank you to NDTV for allowing myself to express myself today. I appreciate that. Well, uh, we also appreciate you joining us, uh, sir. And the whole uh, show today, in fact, the whole idea was to get voices of parliamentarians, of uh, the representative of the government and try and understand whether there can be a way out of this. Not the usual political bickering. Thank you, Mr. Derek O'Brien, for joining us uh, at this moment. Let me very quickly just cut across uh, uh, for a response uh, to this. Mr. S.P. Singh Baghel, Union Minister of uh, State for Law and Justice, Government of India, is joining us. Baghel, sir, bahut bahut shukriya. I want to start by asking you, sir, uh, Derek O'Brien was just telling us that this is unique, that uh, the government this time, we, see, we used to see this, the opposition, in fact, coming together and trying to disrupt the parliament when their voice was not heard. The government, which is absolute power, an absolute majority in the parliament, now that the government is not going to be able to do it. When the government is not going to be able to do it, the government is not going to be able to do it. When the government is not going to be able to do it, the government is not going to be able to do it. और चुनाव आयोग जैसी संवैधानिक संस्था के खिलाफ हो माननीय स्पीकर महोदय की माइक बंद करनी झूठी कहानी पर उनका बयान हो जब उनका बयान सीबीआई के खिलाफ हो उनका बयान हमारे सैनिकों के मनोबल को तोड़ने वाला हो और न्यायपालिका को कटघरे में खड़ा करने वाला हो मीडिया के ऊपर कटाक्ष हो तब हमको सत्ता पक्ष वालों को भी अपने देश की एकता अखंडता के लिए भाईचारा के लिए और देश के मान सम्मान और स्वाभिमान को अक्षुण रखने के लिए उनसे माफी मांगने की हमारी ये मांग है सर लेकिन आपने कहा कि देश के खिलाफ उन्होंने कहा कि वो बाहर से ताकतों को उन्होंने बुलाया या उनको इंटरवेंशन की मांग की पर राहुल गांधी ने ऐसा कुछ मदद की तो मांग कही नहीं थी एक हिस्सा है उनके बयान का जिसका आप बात कर रहे हैं उन्होंने उसके बाद सिर्फ ये कहा था कि हमारा इंटरनल मामला है लेकिन क्या यूरोप और जो बाकी देश हैं वो देख नहीं रहे किस तरह से डेमोक्रेसी का पतन हो रहा है तो कहीं आपको लगता है उस बात को जरा एक छोटी सी बात को बहुत बड़ा बनाया जा रहा है क्या घर का रोना बाहर रोना चाहिए बंद कमरा खुली बात 
उनको करनी चाहिए अपने देश में लेकिन विदेशों में जाकर के और इस प्रकार के बयान देने का मतलब है कि भारत की एकता अखंडता भाईचारा डेमोक्रेसी जुडिशरी मीडिया सैनिक चुनाव आयोग इनको सबको का मनोबल तोड़ने का काम कर रहे हैं ये ये ठीक नहीं है उनके मुंह से ये सब शोभा नहीं देते वो एक जिम्मेदार आदमी है और वो अगर बड़े दिल से भी टुंड्रा प्रदेश या साइबेरिया से भी माफी मांग लें अगर वहां भी हैं तो ये गतिरोध समाप्त हो जाएगा सर लेकिन आप कह रहे हैं कि इसका तरीका सिर्फ यही है कि राहुल गांधी माफी मांगे तभी गतिरोध खत्म होगा कांग्रेस कह चुकी है बिल्कुल साफ शब्दों में माफी तो मांगी नहीं जाएगी और साथ ही साथ अभी डेरिको ब्राइन भी कह रहे थे कांग्रेस भी कह रही है जब मोदी जी बाहर जाते हैं और वो कहते हैं 2014 से पहले देश में कुछ भी नहीं हुआ था करप्ट था और लोगों को बड़ा शर्म महसूस होती थी यहां पैदा होने में तो क्या वो देश का अपमान नहीं था सैतालीस से बावन बावन से सत्तावन से बासठ सड़सठ उनहत्तर चौहत्तर सतहत्तर अस्सी चौरासी नवासी इक्यानवे छियानवे अट्ठानवे 2004 तक की मोदी जी कभी बात नहीं करते हैं ना आलोचना करते हैं मोदी जी पिछले 10 साल जो 2004 से 14 मनमोहन सिंह जी ने आ, सरकार चलाई थी और 14 से 24 आया नहीं है 10 साल और ये 9 साल की जब हम तुलना करते हैं तो कई गुना हमारा विकास होता है चाहे रेलवे का हो या एयरपोर्ट का हो या मेडिकल कॉलेजों का हो हम 80 करोड़ लोगों को 5 किलो गेहूं और चावल मोदी जी फ्री में दे रहे हैं शौचालय लोगों पे नहीं था सड़क पे बैठा करते थे आज इज्जत घर उनको दिया है तो ये तमाम ऐसी योजनाएं हैं जिसकी वो हम अपना तुलनात्मक अध्ययन करते हैं कि एन डी में पर डे कितने किलोमीटर बनते थे आज कितने किलोमीटर बन रहे थे हवाई अड्डे कितने थे आज हवाई अड्डे कितने हैं तब हमारा आज हम जी ट्वेंटी की अध्यक्षता कर रहे हैं ऐसे समय पर ये इस प्रकार के बयान जो है वो भारत को आज मोदी जी छुट्टी नहीं लेते हैं करप्शन पर जीरो टॉलरेंस से काम कर रहे हैं भारत वैश्विक राजनीति में दबदबा हो रहा है फाइव ट्रिलियन से टेन ट्रिलियन की तरफ जा रहे हैं पर कैपिटा इनकम दुगनी हो गई है दो में जब हम आजा सौ साल मना रहे होंगे तो हम पक्का सुपर पावर होंगे मैं रहूँ या ना रहूँ तो ये क्या घबराए हुए हैं मतलब कांग्रेस कह रही है कि आप घबराए हुए आप कह रहे हैं कांग्रेस घबराई हुई लेकिन मैं थोड़ा सा क्योंकि आप मिनिस्टर ऑफ लॉ एंड जस्टिस भी हैं स्टेट यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट मैं आपसे दो चीजों पर बड़ा और फटाफट आपसे जवाब चाहूंगा सेम सेक्स मैरिज को लेकर सरकार ने अपना हलफनामा सुप्रीम कोर्ट में दा, दायर किया है अब जब डिक्रिमिनाइज हो चुका है ये पूरा मामला लोगों को अधिकार है और वो कोई क्रिमिनल मामला नहीं है तो सरकार इसके विरोध में क्यों है सर देखिए जुडिशरी हमारी इंडिपेंडेंट है और भारत के संविधान में कार्यपालिका विधायिका न्यायपालिका की सीमाएं और लक्ष्मण रेखाएं बहुत स्पष्ट है मैं उस पर कोई कमेंट नहीं करना चाहता किरण रिजू साहब ने कल बहुत स्पष्ट कहा है लेकिन हमें भारत की सभ्यता संस्कृति धर्म अध्यात्म रीत रिवाज परंपराओं के बारे में भी सोच के चलना चाहिए एक और जो सवाल है वो उठ रहा था कि जिस तरीके से सुप्रीम uh, कोर्ट और सरकार के बीच में दशाकशी चल रही है थोड़ी तनाव चल रहा है चाहे कोलिजियम सिस्टम को लेकर हो और उसके बाद सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जो अभी डिसीजन आया हिस्टोरिक डिसीजन आया इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स के अपॉइंटमेंट uh, को लेकर क्या सरकार के लिए वो सेटबैक नहीं है मैंने फिर कहा ना कि कार्यपालिका विधायिका न्यायपालिका सबकी अपनी भूमिका है सबके लिए स्पष्ट लक्ष्मण रेखाएं हैं और किसी को भी किसी की लक्ष्मण रेखा को पार नहीं करना चाहिए और बाकी मैं इस प्रकार कोई प्रतिकूल टिप्पणी नहीं करना चाहता हूं और हमारे यहाँ तो ये है कि लोअर कोर्ट से किसी को दिक्कत है तो वो हाई कोर्ट जाए हाई कोर्ट से दिक्कत है दोनों पक्ष सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाए सुप्रीम कोर्ट में डबल बेंच में जाए संविधान पीठ में जाए तो ये सबको किसी को कुछ विरोध है तो वो जा सकते हैं All right uh, bahut bahut shukriya thank you so much uh, mr bagel for joining us uh, and uh, giving us the point of view of the government as far as the parliament lock jam is concerned let me very quickly go across uh, to the spokesperson national spokesperson of the congress party the principal opposition party in the parliament uh, for their view on is there a way forward for solution mr sunit thank you so much for joining us uh, today we didn't wanted to make it a debate and we just wanted the views to come forward and that's why we are talking to all the participants one by one i want to start by asking you mr bagel uh, the union minister just said If Rahul Gandhi wants or the Congress wants to end the logjam he has to apologize that's the only way out So who's going to apologize for all the things that Mr Modi has said overseas Rahul Gandhi in his statement before and in his lecture at the Cambridge University or the IJA or the Chatham House 
has really spoken about India's democracy being a public good. How Mahatma Gandhi's values and Indian democracy can actually be the solution that the world needs to find between America and China pulling us in two different directions. Rahul Gandhi is talking about Indian democracy playing a role and the and the and the the reason why it's important is because 140 crore people inhabit India on this planet and which mm. is why democracies across the world will be determined by death. If you actually ask me, he's telling the world that Indian democracy is central to democratic principles around the world. I think people should applaud that statement being made in foreign land. Instead, okay. Mr. Modi, when he went to China, and you know, there are instances that I've, I've mentioned this on my social media accounts, China, Seoul, Moscow, Germany, you know, UK, US, he just goes on to say things like, I mean, who's going to apologize for these statements and who, and you know, I have to just say one thing, Ankit, it is bizarre, it's absolutely unprecedented that it is the government of the day that is stalling parliamentary proceedings. Okay. We've never seen this before. Why? Because they don't want to discuss Adani? Because we want a JPC? Have you ever heard leader of houses standing up and stalling proceedings? And that's exactly what's happening. So what SP is Bagel, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Bagel just said, he responded to that uh, question of Mr. Uh, I asked him about Prime Minister Modi's speeches. He said that's a comparison that the Prime Minister was making. And that was only with respect to the work that the UPA had done and what we have done. Mr. Baghel is ill-informed. In fact, I almost fell off my chair when Mr. Baghel made the statement and I joined just two minutes before when he said Mr. Modi is working with zero tolerance to corruption. 40% pay CM to aap hi ki Karnatak ki sarkar hai na? The, the contractor association did a press conference even today. They have written to the prime minister about 40% commission. Santosh mm. Patil, one of their own, has written and committed suicide. The reality is that you are running the most corrupt government in this country and you are going to come here and make lofty generalities forget about that what comparison was mr modi making in the uk when he said indian doctors take money and write prescriptions what comparison was he making in germany about defaming the congress party okay. what comparison does he make when he says nothing has happened in this country for 70 years so the the people of this country who toil hard in nation building okay. are being delated and berated by the prime minister and now, he wants to get away with it now may i ask you uh, because the sure. bjp keeps on saying that mr gandhi is making all these claims and he himself is not even present when the parliament session has begun uh, how do you respond to that charge and do you think focus on rahul gandhi is a well thought diversionary tactic you know i have been saying this for very long and i will say it all over again i think it's time that mr modi should devise and formally institute a cabinet you know ministry within his ranks which should be called the rahul gandhi troll ministry because there are various people who are vying with each other toppling each other you know are in race to be troller number one it was a department earlier Ms. Prati Rani used to handle. Now, for some reason, it has gone into Anurag Thakur. I don't think she did a very good job of it. Of course, people like Hardeep Puri, Minakshi Lekhi, Hemanto Biswa Sarma. These people right. are just waiting for Mr. Gandhi to say a word and then comes an orchestrated attack. Why so? I really want to understand. And I am also willing to give them the benefit of doubt. They may believe that Rahul Gandhi has said something wrong. Let's come and debate all the issues in Parliament. When he talks about Adani, you will have to answer on Adani. You can't run away. When he talks on China, you can't tell the country. Okay. Koi wa nahi. When he talks on high prices, you can't say, lesson nahi khata. When he talks on unemployment, you can't say, Pakode talo. When he talks on China, you can't say, you know, okay. there is nothing that has okay. happened. That Ma is the reality. You can't run away from issues that he's raising. Right, but don't you think, don't you think, Mr. Sunit, for all practical and you know, perceptional, optical purposes as well. Mr. Gandhi, uh, sh don't you think he should have been in the parliament uh, when the session began? This again goes to this whole thing that is, uh, you know, spoken about him, that he's not serious about 20 being a 24-7 politician, ma'am. You know, I, I'm sorry to say this, and I'm so sorry if it sounds rude to you. My apologies in advance. He's a four-time member of parliament. I mean, you know, he's a public intellectual. Every word that he says rattles the BJP to an extent that they have a battery of, you know, spokespersons, ministers, chief ministers, former chief ministers coming to attack Rahul Gandhi. And, you know, they're going to raise issues about him not being in parliament. Yes, he's not in parliament for the last two days, but he will be there soon. He's on an overseas trip. He was making the lecture as the visiting fellow at Cambridge and he had a couple of engagements there. And everybody has seen him publicly. 
he made that lecture on the 28th of february right. on the 14th of march the bjp is still trying to find faults with it okay. i have only two questions to raise will you debate china in the house and will you debate all the allegations against adani you cannot hide under the supreme court committee because the supreme court committee is a review of regulatory right. framework it is not a fact finding mission the government is cohort the mr modi they has given political patronage and which is why no regulatory action is ma'am last 10 seconds is there a way out can there be some sort of uh, common ground for at least the parliament to function everybody and i have been asking this uh, you know question to all the participants those who have joined me today is there some common ground that can be found because parliament is supposed to function there is a reason why there is a parliament absolutely and i will quote two things to you we all want parliament to function but parliament can't be a mute spectator to brute brazen majority of the government the parliament has to function because parliament is the temple of democracy and it is supposed to discuss issues of national importance okay. you will not discuss price rise you will not discuss unemployment you will not discuss china you will not discuss pegasus you will not discuss adani what right. another you want to do in parliament we're supposed to come there and sing your peers i don't understand what are we okay. supposed to do in parliament and also running parliament is the responsibility of the ruling government Absolutely. which is actually causing hurdles in running parliament right now because they are hiding it, behind the dark it, it just seems that you held your breath for that 10 second and completely uh, gave me the answer because you did not stop even for a comma thank you so much supreshnit for joining us the whole idea ladies and gentlemen today was to try and get all the views from all the sides the principal opposition parties the government to try and see whether there is still a possibility that the next few days uh, two weeks of this session left can be in true letter and spirit be productive that's all the time that we have in this edition of uh, breaking news news and updates do continue on ndtv i'll see you tomorrow thank you so much good night